Hello and welcome to the 12th video in my series on getting started with AutoCAD. My name is Chris and in this video we're going to talk about reusable drawings called blocks. Please note I'm using AutoCAD 2015. If you're not using it, yours is going to look different than mine. With that out of the way, let's get cranking here. So the question is what is a block and why should you use it? A block is any selection of objects that you'd like to have in your drawing that you save as what's called a definition and what that does is it maintains its the integrity of, of that section of your drawing and allows you to do what's called instantiation of it so it lets you make copies of it and the copies are all going to be identical so for example if let's say you are drawing a house and you want to have doors in your house it's a smart thing to do and you don't want to have to redraw every single door because that would be a pain in the neck what you can do is you can create a door block and then you can instantiate that door block across your drawing. Now this does a couple things for you. One is it means, means that you have a lot less drawing that you have to do. The two, the second thing is that it means that you can um, control your drawing from smaller units. So you can have these big complicated drawings that can be controlled by individual components of the drawing. <clears throat> so let's get started here. Let's create a block. I'm gonna go ahead and just draw a basic quadrilateral here. Okay, we got a quad, and our quad is four lines. You can see here we got a line, we got another line, another line, another line, and a fourth line. And on their own, let's say that we want to make a copy of them. Let's say we want to make a copy of them right here. Um, and then we say, decide, oh shoot, we actually want to change that so it's up there. You'll notice that this one doesn't change, and that's because, in fact, they're different objects. They're totally different objects. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to turn this into a block. Now the first thing I want you to do is notice where this geometry is in relation to your 0, 0 point. This is critical. Um, not hypercritical because it can be redefined, but it's critical because this determines where your insertion point is for your block. And it's going to be wherever it is, is in relation to 0, 0, unless you define otherwise. So let's go ahead and leave it there just for the sake of demonstration, and I'll show you here. We're going to type block on the command line, and up comes this block editing dialog. And this lets us pick a block definition. Now, we've already got objects specified because we for our block because we picked those on the screen before. Um, and you can see here by default that it wants to have our insertion point, our base point, be at 0, 0, 0, which is that point right there. <clears throat> And you can see by default it comes in so it's non-annotative. That means the block doesn't doesn't change size depending on the scale of your drawing to maintain size on paper, just like annotative text. Uh, you can determine whether how it scales or whether or not you can reduce it back to uh, its simple geometry by exploding it. And you can pick you know unit of measure that your block is in and all that jazz. Your block has its own separate coordinate system from the rest of your drawing so you can have you can have that set up any way you'd like and this is again why zero this zero zero in relation to where your your drawing is is, is important so we're going to leave this option checked here to open this in the block editor and click OK Oop, I need to give it a name we call this quad and here we are in the block editor and again this is in this is in the coordinate system the block lives in and you can see that, that the block, in fact, still maintains that relationship to the point of origin. And um, and when we go and close the block editor, save our changes, you'll notice when we make a selection, no longer is it separate geometry, uh, it's a single entity, and there's a grip at that point of origin where you can click on it and you can move it around. This is also your insertion point. So if you have a block in your drawing, you've created a block, you can insert another copy of it by typing insert and you pick the block that you'd like and you click OK and then you pick the location that you'd like to insert it on and you can notice it's it's hanging out exactly where it was when I created the block in relation to my cursor so let's go ahead and drop that in so again that's insert to be able to put another copy of a, of a, draw, of a block in there so let's talk about editing our blocks really quick. We've got two of them here now. 
And remember, the last time we made changes to our blocks, or to our blocks, to the geometry that we had in here, the one geometry changed and the other didn't. And this is where blocks get really different. And again, you can't edit blocks natively inside model space. You have to go into what's called the block editor. This is accessible by selecting your block. You can right click on it and go to block editor. Or you can type B edit, select your block, all that jazz. Um, for here on out, I've got a, a string of command line shortcuts that I use that take me through this really quickly. Um, and I'm going to be using those, but I'll tell you how, how it works. But just remember, you can right click on it and select block editor. So the first thing let's do is let's change where this where the insertion point is in relation to our geometry. We're going to do that by selecting this, and I'm going to move it on top of our point of origin. Now, one of the cool things about, about AutoCAD is, the cool thing about AutoCAD is that you can create incredibly precise drawings. So this clicking it and just picking an arbitrary point business isn't really that useful when it comes to having incredibly accurate drawings. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it, we're going to move it, and we're going to pick that point right there on the bottom, and then I'm going to key in 0, 0, which is where I want it to go, and it will jump right there. Now, a lot of you are probably screaming at me right now, and the reason is because when you did it, it didn't work. And one thing you'll notice about my interface is that when I type stuff, nothing comes up on my cursor, and this is because I don't have this option called dynamic input turned on. And if I try to do this again, with dynamic input, right, I select that, type 0, 0, it doesn't move. And you'll notice because it gets this at symbol at it, which means that it's trying to move it in relation to your cursor, to its current location rather. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that off altogether. Oops, there we go. And I'm going to select that, pick it again, 0, 0, and it moves right where I want it. So I, don't, I personally don't like to have dynamic input turned on. There are ways around this, and you're welcome to go online and look them up. Um, but I, I don't use dynamic input. So let's go ahead and save the block here. Uh, you can go ahead and do that by just closing it. I prefer to use it on the command line because I can do it more quickly. I can just type BS and BC, and there we go. And you'll notice that our blocks, A, they moved. They moved to this point of origin in relation to where the geometry was, right? The geometry moved around inside the drawing because the origin didn't change. We didn't move the block itself, right? That's changing where the origin is. We moved the geometry inside the block to the to the origin. So let's go ahead and edit this again here really quick. I'm going to pull up the block editor and we're going to change this from a quad to a pentagon. Save it and close it. You'll notice that again your geometry and all of these updates automatically. And it doesn't matter how many copies of this we have, if we make a change to it, right? They all update. This isn't bound by whether or not your objects are mirrored or whether or not they are rotated or whether or not they're scaled. The block definition is the block definition, and you can modify that block definition on any of your instances. And they will all update, regardless of how it's skewed or scaled or rotated or mirrored or anything else. So that's inserting blocks, creating blocks, editing blocks. So let's go ahead and edit this block here. Oops, got to be 10% smarter than the object I'm trying to operate here. Let's edit this block, and you'll notice here if I go over to my layers, I've only got the one layer on here, and it's layer zero, which means inherently everything in my block is on layer zero. It has to be, right? So let's go ahead and add a second layer here. I'm going to call this one test. We're going to change the color a vivacious yellow. And what I want to show you is that layer zero is what makes layer zero so special. So now that we have that second one here, I'm going to select one of these and you'll notice that this comes in on layer zero as well. If you look up here, you got layer zero. 
we can pick a different layer and you'll notice that all of a sudden it changes to the color that the layer is on. And this is what's so special about layer zero is that it lets you acquire the properties of the layer that you put your object on based on the properties of the layer. So we can control this whole thing by the by our layers, right? You can see that turned to a, a blue that you can't really tell is different. Uh, let's make that nice and dramatic. There we go. And this doesn't happen. This just straight up does not happen if you select your um, your object and you put it on a layer that is not um, that is not layer zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select those two legs right there. I'm going to make another one called test two. We're going to make this a green so you can be absolutely positive that it's not the same thing. And I'm going to put these two objects on that test two layer. Now it doesn't look like you, you can't really see it here in, in uh, with a white background. So let's go ahead and save it and close it. And you'll notice they all acquire that blue leg. And you'll notice another thing that the portions of the block that were on layer zero pick up the properties of the layer that they're on, whereas the portions that were assigned to a different layer do not. So I, I feel like I'm just hammering this one to death, but this is so critical. So now that you've got that as a basic understanding, well, that's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, go ahead and like it. If you uh, thought this video was life-changing, go ahead and subscribe, and I will bring you more of them. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.